My name's Greg Burke. I'm the Curator Manager at the Blue Mountains Botanic Garden, Mount Toma, and I've been fascinated with carnivorous plants since I was four years old. Globally, we have over 840 species of carnivorous plants now, and Australia is the epicentre. We have fantastic ancient soils, particularly in southwestern Australia and northern Australia, where carnivorous plants have evolved to be incredibly diverse, but they occur right across the globe, everywhere bar Antarctica. Because carnivory evolved many different times in at least seven different plant lineages, the uh, trapping mechanisms are as diverse as those plant groups. So basically speaking, we've got sticky leaves, um, an animal will become stuck to that leaf, the leaf will then dissolve the in insect prey um, just through that process of releasing enzymes through those glands. Another group of traps are the pitfall traps, so water vessels, pitchers, that hold a fluid, very similar to a human stomach acid, so think of it like a stomach. They'll often have a lid across the top of the, the pitcher, which produces a sweet nectar that'll attract the prey, and the, the pitcher itself will be a beautiful colour, either to, to attract butterflies, or some of them look like meat or rotten meat to attract flies and things like that. Some of those traps in Southeast Asia, Nepenthes Raja being the, the most famous, are big enough to capture a rat and a few rats have been found in the, the pictures of these plants. Of course the most famous of all the trapping mechanisms is the Venus flytrap, the snap trap. The leaf itself is divided into two halves. The petiole or the midrib of the leaf is formed into a hinge. It has these beautiful fangs or teeth along the outside and then these tiny little sensitive trigger hairs inside the leaf. When a bug comes along and touches one of those trigger hairs, it starts a stopwatch. The plant starts counting. If it gets to 20 and nothing has happened, the clock resets. If another trigger hair is touched in that time, the trap snaps shut. It then releases a digestive enzyme and digests the animal. That takes about 10 to 15 days. Once it's consumed, the leaf reopens and it's ready for its next victim. There's a few plants that form traps that use light to trick animal prey. Famously, Saracenia citicina, or the lobster pot pitcher plant, has this big bulbous head with a small mouth opening, and it's especially designed to capture tadpoles. Uh, it gets flooded in, in the cooler months, and when the water comes over, the tadpoles are able to swim in. They swim through this tiny hole, and the light that's reflected all around the back of the trap prevents them from finding their way out. A number of other plants, though, use a similar a method. They use this, this light trick, uh, where the, the prey will find its way to the mouth of the pitcher by the coloration and the beautiful sweet nectar that these plants produce. But then there's these light windows called fenestrations at the back of the trap that look like the escape route and the bug will try to escape into that light, hits the back of the trap and drops down into the, the body of the pitcher. The last group of trapping mechanisms is the suction traps, a group called the bladder warts or utricularia. These guys have a little bladder, very tiny in many cases, and it has a swinging door on it. The door is closed when the trap is in the, the uh, unsprung state and it's ready to capture a prey item. The prey comes in close and it touches hairs right in front of the trap. The trap swings open, sucks the prey in and slams shut. And all of that happens in a few milliseconds. It's faster than the speed of a, a blink of an eye. None of these plants are really quick at killing their prey. They're all pretty brutal and the process is pretty slow.